Hey everyone, welcome back to Search or Savvy. We'll give everybody a few minutes to start coming in. Hope everybody's having a good day. It's a beautiful day here in Connecticut. Um, I'm kind of glad we didn't do this yesterday. We had very high winds. I know I give a, a weather forecast or a broadcast every single time I get on. But um, anyway, everything is good. I was just in Queens, New York at So Right Sewing Machine for a fantastic two-day event, which was really, really fun. And we did uh, decorative serger stitches on Friday, and then we made the tablet case on Saturday. So that was really great. And uh, I think everybody, I know everybody finished. It was fantastic. In fact, I think we finished a little bit early. So that was kind of nice. And I was able to get on the road and drive home on Saturday. So that was great. But um, everything else is good. And if you're in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, this weekend, um, March, what is it? Um, March, today's the 12th. 13, 14, the 15th and the 16th, I will be at Bernina World of Sewing right in Raleigh, fantastic store. They have a couple of different branches. There's one in Wilmington as well, but I'll be at the Raleigh one. And we will be doing my tote bag pattern. Let's see, right here. So that that's going to be a really fun class. People will learn a lot of different decorative techniques, construction mm. techniques, um, how to make some adjustments on their machines. We'll be working on the L890s, and I think the brand new um, L890 QE machine, which is just beautiful. It's such a pretty machine. And um, I know we have, hey, Diana from San Diego. Hey, thanks for joining. It's early out there. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people um, have different questions about um, the QE, the L890 QE versus the L890 that you've seen me working on for the last few years. And um, before we get going, I'll just wait for people to come in um, since it's only 12.03 for where I am. Uh, the QE is the exact machine. Hi, Kathy Shalda. Jean, hi, nice to see you. The QE has the same functionality as the L890, the original L890. However, it comes with an amazing bundle of things. Uh, it has several feet that quilters would use. The QE is the quilters edition. And um, the housing on the outside looks different. It's um, all white and it's got a beautiful kind of a, um, a cover stitch, chain stitch, plaid sort of design on the face of it. Hi, Jean from Virginia. Nancy from Kentucky. Carol, hello. Um, but the functionality is exactly the same, but it also comes with Amanda Murphy's incredibly beautiful quilt. It's called Bloom and Grow and it's in aquas and grays or whites and blacks and it, it's just beautiful. All of the fabric is in that kit. Um, all of the specialty threads are in there, even fusible thread for your binding. Um, and it has uh, an instruction book and I, I can't emphasize this enough. I think the instruction book for that quilt is about 68 pages long, 64, 68 pages long, because um, Amanda herself said that she is a quilting expert. She goes all over the world. She's, she's incredibly talented in the quilting world, but she was not well-versed with sergers. So she wrote the instructions for someone who's kind of in the same boat as her, who is not super um, familiar with what, what stitch do I need? How do I set up? What am I doing for this particular part of the quilt? So everything is in that instruction manual. And also, um, and I mentioned the big book of serger quilting, which is also brand new. Whether you have a Bernina machine or not, this book is just beautiful. I have it right here. 
And this is such an incredible book. All of their big books are really, really nice. But um, for people with sergers, they came out, they had the original big book of sergers or surge, yeah, sergers. And um, that is very uh, comprehensive and it, but it's more geared toward nuts and bolts information, basic information about your quilts. The big book of serger quilting has a ton of beautiful, beautiful photography in it. And um, it has a lot more about some of the decorative specialty things that you can do on a serger. And um, it is written for, um, you can use it for a four thread overlock or a combo machine, one or the other. If you don't have the cover chain stitch um, capability on your machine, there's a lot of decorative stitches in there and other stitches as well that you could do on your four thread overlock. So I just wanted to mention that because across the board, no matter what brand or model machine you have, it's a really nice reference and it's a great companion to go along with their big book of sergers that they originally came out with. So that's that. I'm going to put this off to the side. So um, one other little housekeeping thing. Um, we all know that uh, National Serger Month is in April and I'm sure you all have it prominently circled on your calendars. But um, there are going to be a lot of great deals on machines and everything else. And don't forget, if um, within a few days of today, you decide that you're going to make a purchase of a sewing machine, serger, or software, any purchase from Bernina over $1,000 is eligible for a $100 rebate coupon from me. So all you would have to do is, um, after you've made your purchase, email me for the coupon. I'll put today's date on it and you have to get that into Bernina within 30 days of your purchase and all the information is on that coupon so I won't go over that either. Um, so that's that and um, today's topic we are going to talk about um, serger chains because I think this is really fun and I just did a little variation. Hey Debbie from Oregon. Um, I just did a little variation on my cross body bag. I had been thinking, I wish I had some um, ultra suede to make a bag. Well, lo and behold, I opened one of the places where I keep my stash of fabric and there it was, there was ultra suede. And um, people who've seen the bag have said, where did you get it? It's such a beautiful quality. The honest answer is, I have no idea. I don't even remember when I got this, but I wanted to talk about this a little bit because I just did a quick, easy variation on this. And I may, when I kind of tweak it a little bit um, and really get it exactly the way I want it to be, I will um, put up that little variation for people who have it. But what I did was I added a side panel that's about a little over an inch wide and you can see it goes around because sometimes um, if I'm carrying something that is uh, kind of thick and bulky on my original one that doesn't have that side panel sometimes I'd be stuffing it in and I just wanted to try it out for a little more um, room on that and I think there are a few things that I might change on this I was just testing it out on it I'm happy with it I'll use it. it it works fine and I have my new rivets and snaps on it with my cam snap um, table press which is really super fun I have looked at that for years and thought, wow, I could really use it. And because um, I, I was never um, fortunate enough to be able to squeeze hard enough on the handheld presses with that. And the snaps and rivets and stuff like that would always be loose and they look yucky. And so I just gave up. Um, I was a hygienist for years and I think I've just lost a lot of strength in my hand. And also, I don't think it was that ultra strong to begin with. But anyway. Um, the reason I brought that up is because I wove serger chains on this. Um, and I'll put that under the other close up camera so that you can see it. And uh, I have a snap on that too. Let me go to that camera so that you can see it. But um, before I do, the, I was 
thinking about doing this and I kind of wanted it to be very soft looking, kind of monochromatic. And I was debating what to use for um, the weaving. And I thought, well, maybe I'll use ribbons, but then it just didn't work for me. It just didn't have the look that I wanted. So um, I kind of played around with the serger chains and I said, these are great. So um, I've used serger chains on a lot of different things. You've seen them on my little tassels. Those are serger chains as well. Uh, what else? Oh, and I've used a three thread chain stitch, which is a little bit different. That's in cover chain stitch mode. Um, I've used that on the surface of bags and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But, um, the three thread chain stitch or, um, three thread rolled hem to create the chain is super great for doing a lot of things. You could even couch chains onto things like your quilts or other types of projects on your sewing machine, which is fine. So, oh, Kathy Shell, this, the hygienist pain is real. Yes. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, my hand doesn't really bother me that much as far as pain goes. Every once in a while, I think I get this weird nerve thing in my left hand. And I think it was from holding the mirror in that hand all the time. So, Anyway, enough of that. But um, the three thread rolled hem to create chains, and you can do it with either um, an eight weight thread, 12 weight threads. Um, I wouldn't go much thinner than that or lighter than that on threads unless you wanted something very delicate, which is fine. You may have a very good use for it, or if you're going to be kind of doubling or quadrupling it up to um, couch onto something, that's fine. But I typically use either a um, 12 weight in my upper and lower looper or eight weights if I want a really thicker chain. So, and I've got examples of both of those, so I'll show those. But um, anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is the original cross body bag pattern. And you can hear I am back to my squeaky old chair. Uh, for this, I found that my new chair, which is really nice and comfortable, it has a very high back. And if I turn, it whacks this camera and knocks it off of um, where it's supposed to be. Hey, Maxine. Hi, how are you in Spokane? Nice to see you or hear from you or chat with you, one or the other. So um, let's go over and take a look at this. And I think I took out. No, I didn't. Um, I have um, the little uh, wheel that I use to make the perforations in this. What I did was I drew my design out on paper first um, for how I wanted the weaving to go. And I played around with a few different designs. And then when I got it the way I wanted it to um, be, I transferred it onto the front, the back of the bag. And I'm going to go, let's go to that camera right now. So here we have it. Um, here is the flap. I think I'm going to put a tassel on this since it sticks out. But I can flip that under and get rid of it. Uh, here are my rivets. This is my snap that I did with my cam snap table press. And these are the serger chains. And what I used for those was um, I used two of the cream colored 12 way threads in my upper looper and that darker kind of taupey or can't actually more camel color I used in the lower looper and I just ran off a few yards of the chain and um, then I took my uh, ruler and I measured I think this is about three inches across and I used uh, a cutting wheel, uh, a rotary cutter that is called an edge perfect blade. It is one that's made by um, great copy patterns. And that perforates about every three eighths of an inch on here. And on some of these, I skipped over the perforation. It's something that you would use on a knit fabric. You would not want to use it on a woven fabric. The only exception to that would be, I think, if you um, decide that you want to do something, say for a wall hanging, something that's never going to get washed. It's not going to get a lot of wear and tear because you're breaking the weaving 
every three eighths of an inch. I think they also make, and I'm, I, I'm not sure if they still do or not, they made a second one that perforates every five eighths of an inch. And when you roll that, it's almost like rolling a stop sign because the gap between the teeth is wider. And let me just go back and let me see if I, I think I took it out and didn't bring it over here. So hang on just a second, I'll go get it so I can show it to you. thought I brought it with me and I didn't. Okay, so here it is. And you can see that it's not, it doesn't look like a regular um, rotary cutter. It's a 45 millimeter blade. You'd only use it in your 45 millimeter um, rotary cutter. But uh, the, it'll make those perforations. And that's what I wove this through, which is kind of cool. It makes it very easy and you get very exact perforations and measurements on that. I'll show you the back of this bag as well. It's exactly the same design. So I just wove those serger chains through. I ran off, as I said, I ran off a few yards of that um, chain. Hey from Rhode Island. Hey Delta Foxtrot from New Zealand. Wow. Thanks for joining me. Naples, Idaho, Paula, Great to see all of you. But anyway, so I ran off the serger chain and um, my tip for that is always press it after you're done rubbing it off because it tends to kind of get curly and coily and I think you get a nicer looking um, tassel or weaving when it's nice and flat and smooth. But you can do what you want to do. So, um, Yes, it will work on boiled wool, Madeline. Thank you. In fact, I do have a um, another uh, crossbody bag that I made from the sleeve of a red felted sweater. I had this uh, felted sweater for ages, and I think I just had one sleeve left, and um, I put it, I pressed it, and I put it on my cutting table. And I, I laid out the um, pieces of the cross body bag and I had just enough to create that. I do not have it with me. It's in a traveling trunk show, unfortunately. I think it's in Chicago right now. But I did, um, I did that with the boiled wool. So yes, you can definitely, definitely do that. But as I say, the, um, if you wanted to use that um, little cutting wheel, the um, Edge Perfect Blade, I typically would not use it on anything woven unless it was something like a wall hanging, something that's never going to get washed, never get, I'd never be touched that often either. Um, and really, I'd be hesitant to even do that. So I, I don't want to hear if there are any disasters for anyone. So that's that um, with the weaving. And um, again, that is the same type of chain that I used on my tablet case as well. This is certainly um, many more yards that I ran off for this, but same thing. And actually the chain stitch, I can go on to my other camera to show you this, because you can use that same um, chain stitch, the narrow one, in overlock as well as cover stitch mode. Now, I don't run off a chain uh, for tassels or for weaving in cover chain stitch mode. That I always use a three thread rolled hem stitch. So just uh, an FYI. So let me go back to that and show you that. So what we're looking at right here is this teal and purple um, stitching on top where my finger is, that is the chain stitch and that's in cover chain stitch mode. So that's that. So let's take a look at it on a couple of other things as well. Here is what I call my little faux Chanel bag. And I'm gonna move this one out of the way for a minute. And this one, it, what you hear is the chain. I used a chain that I 
got the, um, I got this chain on the So Hungry Hippie website, and it was very inexpensive, and I really wasn't sure how the quality would be, and I was delighted with how beautiful it is. It's heavy. It's really, really nice. So that was So Hungry Hippie. But this, I set up my um, serger for a uh, chain stitch with a single needle, and I put three silver threads. It kind of looks white on camera. Um, oh, Pam, you said, where do you find the um, blade? You can look on um, the, I'll think of it. Um, I'm, I'm having a brain skip. I'll get back to that and I'll think of it. Um, I put three silver threads in my chain looper. I did two 12 weight um, silver threads and then I use a um, I use a silver embroidery thread. Now the metallic embroidery threads can be a little more persnickety on a serger and I did not put that on my thread fusion stand with the other two threads but it was in the chain looper. I had it off to the side on an, uh, another stand because I found that when I had it on the thread fusion stand, it kind of twisted and tangled a little bit. But when I kept it off to the side by itself, it was fine. So um, that that worked out pretty well. But so and I drew the lines on the wrong side of the fabric, and I just followed them down to do that kind of quilted look on that. This is a brooch that is um, a vintage brooch, and. Um, Every single stone was still in it. It was in perfect condition. So I just gently, gently cleaned it. But I thought it was really nice to use. So that is how I used the chain stitch for that quilted appearance. My, my faux Chanel evening bag. So let me move that. That chain is very noisy. Put it off to the side. And then here is another one of the original um, crossbody bags. This is a red silk base and I applique on different um, red cottons. I wanted to keep it all in the red family and I used a kind of a variegated pinky red thread and uh, a purpley one for the chunky chain stitching. Both of those were eight weight threads on that. So it really kind of stands up on the fabric surface itself which is really nice. And um, I think that's very dimensional. And I know sometimes quilters are looking for something new and different to put on their quilt. Chunky chain stitching, um, if you do anything like um, a cover stitch with multiple threads in the chain loop or 12 weights or eight weights, you get that nice a raised dimension on your stitching, which is super pretty. Um, and I'm still, I mentioned the name of the company before, and now I'm having a brain skip on that, but um, I will think of it. Hang on a second. Um, let, let me consult Google on that. Hang on just a second, and I will get it for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a second. Of course, they're not showing it. Um, yeah. Patty Otto's company, and I don't know why I'm, having, I'm forgetting what it is. Great Copy Patterns. Great Copy. That's the name. That's where you can get that. Um, Patty Otto and her husband Rick own that company. So, um, 
and they do a lot of things with knit fabrics and polar fleece and stuff like that. So they're, they have some nice things out there. But that Edge Perfect Blade, if they still carry both of them, the original one is the 3 8 perforations, which is the one that I use. And the other one it has um, a bigger gap between the perforations, which is 5 8 but on knits, I do like to tell people that you do not need to go through every single hole. Nothing's going to come undone on knits and ravel or anything else. And I've skipped more than one hole if I wanted a longer um, distance between where I was weaving. So it, it'll work fine. But great copy patterns is where you can find that. Hey, Sally from Rhode Island. Who else do I see here? Um... Pam, you're from Missouri. That's great to see. Um, Pam says on the Bernina decorative thread attachment, yes, there is a decorative spool pin that you can put on your um, the little table. You can hook it on to the edge of it. But since I have the thread fusion, that's what I typically use, which is the stand where you can put multiple threads. So, um, and also, um, just before, before we go over to the machine, I wanted, I had a little trouble with my equipment uh, in February and I was working with eight weight threads and I wanted to talk about that a little bit and I had to kind of go out and stop that streaming and then come back in and start it up again. So I didn't get everything in that I wanted to say. So I'm just going to grab something and show you um, how pretty the coverage is on an edge with the eight way thread and eight way thread is pretty chunky and hefty, but you can definitely use it in your loopers on your serger. Not all sergers um, might, they might not be able to handle it, um, but most of them will. But I always say, if your machine feels like it's straining or um, it's really having a hard time carrying that thread through, don't do anything that's going to damage your machine. If it can't handle that eight weight thread, then switch over to a 12 weight thread and it'll be very pretty, I guarantee it. But I just want to show you the coverage on this. I'm just gonna grab it. I finished it last night and I haven't even gotten the thread tails tucked in. I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because it's, it's a new project. But let me move this out of the way. And go back to that camera because I want to show you. There is the twice as nice stitch. Both of these stitches. And let me bring my camera in a little bit more. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Maybe lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, both of these are eight weight threads. But And I had my stitch length on 1.4 because they are so thick. And that is the twice as nice stitch, which you know is um, a three thread wide, but with the tensions tweaked. I had my upper looper tension, which is the orange thread. I had the tension on that looper up to, I believe, nine. I left the lower looper on four and I cranked up my needle tension because the eight weight threads are so super heavy. I had to crank that up to about six. And that way on the back side, you can see that lower looper thread is pulled across the top. It wraps over the edge of the project and um, it'll meet halfway. You can vary that with um, tweaking the tensions, but um, this was something I didn't get to show on the last one with the eight weight threads, but just beautiful. And those are cotton. Those are not the rayon threads. They're cotton threads. So really, really nice to use. You can use those for flat locking and lots of other things as well. In fact, you can see, uh, um, yep, those are that's an eight weight thread you can see on this reverse flat locking right here. So that's all I'm going to show of that. But I just wanted to do that simply because I did have that little technical glitch last month. And I wanted to be sure to give you the full, the full value of that. So let me go back to me. Um, 
<laughs> Kathy says thick threads equal linebackers. Yes. Hi, Debbie from Minnesota. Yvonne from the UK. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, this is so much. I love it when we have the uh, chat on. And that was another thing. Um, I'll just tell you uh, what happened with the last one with the eight way threads where you were not able to comment on that. It wasn't anything you did. It was what I did. I made the mistake of saying that the video was suitable for children. And apparently YouTube um, automatically, when you say something is suitable for children, even though this is, what, what difference would it make? They shut off the ability for doing a live chat, also for doing comments afterwards. So um, that was my fault on that one. So my apologies on it. But um, Pam says, I see 12 weights on your website, but I haven't found a source for eight weight Valdani. Valdani is a wool thread, I believe. Um, I'm trying to think of where you would find find that I think I'm trying to think I don't I don't carry it or and I don't I've used it a couple of times it's been a long time since I've used it but it's very beautiful thread um I think if you google it see where you can find it there there will probably be a source that will pop up for that but the Valdani is a wool thread and um, a lot of quilters who like to do hand applique and things on felted wool like to use that particular thread. But um, I can't think of a source off the top of my head. If somebody in, in the chat here knows of a source for the Valdani, go ahead and pop it in there. That's helpful for everybody, including me. Um, so anyway, all right. So I thought we would go to the machine i am still set up with that lavender and orange thread that i used on that um at the finishing edge on the uh project i just showed you so i guess we'll stick with that and uh let me go to my screen and i am set up right now a source for eight weight thread um you can get that from i think you can purchase it from wonderful threads i love their threads um sulky threads are good also that's like a pearl crown rayon um wonderful has cotton as well as um they have cotton as well as rayon and they also make metallic which is kind of nice um and that i use the metallic one has um it's an eight weight thread but it has one filament of a metallic um, through it, and it's very pretty. It's just got a little bit of sparkle to it, and um, it works very well in sergers. I've never had a problem with that at all. Um, one thing, let me just go back to me for a second on that while we're talking about that. Um, with the metallic threads on any serger with air threading, you may find that it is a little bit um, more difficult to get the metallic through the air threading tubes. That's on any brand. And that's not anything wrong with your serger. What it is is that metallic filament sometimes doesn't like to bend as it goes through those air threading tubes. So you might need to use a thread cradle for that. But again, there's not a problem unless you get some lint or something caught in your uh, threading tubes, which happens occasionally um but it's that metallic filament sometimes it doesn't like to bend when it goes through those tubes but if you use a thread cradle you can wish it right through so let's go back to the machine and um let's look at my settings i am in overlock mode um set up for a three thread rolled hem here my squeaky chair um the green is my uh, right needle thread. I'm leaving that on the default setting. My upper looper is on four. Again, the default setting. And my lower looper, I cranked that one up to seven. And you can tell that it's not on the default setting because that number is yellow. And also, um, I'm leaving my differential feed on one. I'm not doing anything with fabric. I'm just creating a chain. But I have two eight-weight threads in the loopers, which are pretty hefty. So 
Um, I'm going to start with my stitch length on 1.5. I might bring it down to 1.4. I'll see how the chain looks. So um, let's go down to the foot. And I think that looks good. Um, Maxine says she can't get 12 weight threads locally. Um, you're not going to really find 12 weight threads in a lot of the big box stores because they are a specialty thread. Um, I do have those um, two artist palette packs. One is called Bayside Blooms. One is paint box. The paint box threads are bright and bold colors. The Bayside Blooms are more pastel -y. Um, Those have 10 spools of 12 weight cotton, the Egyptian cotton thread in them. And each spool has 110 yards on it. Those are really nice to use. Those are the wonderful ones. But there are lots of good brands. Um, if you can't get them locally or at your local, I always say please support your local dealer first. But if your dealer just does not carry any of the heavier weight threads, then um, you can go online and you can probably, if you go on wonderfill.com, sometimes I think they'll, I think they'll have lists of dealers or places that you can buy it and you might be able to buy it retail from them. Suzanne says, oh, you're going to be in my class in uh, Raleigh. I'm excited. That's great. Um, so anyway, all right. So enough of that commercial. That's enough. So you can see I had the um, three thread wide on last night. I have pulled back my stitch finger so that um, I'm going to have a nice small stitch. Let me go so that you can see my settings also. They're up in the corner. They're kind of small, but you can kind of see them while I'm stitching. And I'm going to hold my thread chain. And when I was in New York this weekend, um, and we were doing some cover stitching and chain stitching on the center panel of the tablet case, um, one of the tips I always gave the um, students is hold on to your thread chains until the needle starts um, and takes about three or four stitches in the fabric itself. And um, you and that was in cover chain stitch mode, by the way. Um, but even in overlock mode, I always hold my thread chains to get started because the heavier weight threads sometimes just need a little help to start advancing. So um, just holding on to those will do the trick. So let's start that. That's a Bernina Burp. Nothing wrong with that. And um, if you don't hold your thread chains, I want to see if I can get in a little bit closer and show you something. The reason I like to do that is because, let me get this presser foot out of the way. If you don't hold on to it to get started, let me see if I can move the camera in. I, I apologize if it makes people dizzy. Um, what happens is you can get a lot of buildup of thread on that stitch pin. Let me just point that out with a pointer so my finger's not in the way. That narrow chain is forming right over the stitch pin. I have um, pulled back my uh, stitch finger, which is this. You can see it go forward and backward. I'm pulling that back, and that skinnies down my three thread stitch to that nice chain. So, um, and actually my knife is engaged, but I'm not cutting off anything. So let me put my foot back, put my presser foot down. And actually when I'm creating chains without any fabric in them, I hold the chain in back of the foot and I try to keep uh, a consistent amount of tension on it as I'm pulling it along. Not super hard, but I try to keep it a consistent amount of tension because that will keep the stitches nice and regular. So let me just run off a little bit more. And give that a 
slip and we can look at that. It's, these are, you wouldn't think lavender and orange together would be so pretty, but I think it is. So let's take a look at that under the close-up camera. Okay, let me get this out of the way. So here we are. Uh, let me bring this down a little closer. You can see, I think I have to move it back and let me lighten it up again. Okay, and you can see how one side is kind of orangey and then if I turn it, you see more of the lavender color in there. And the um, needle thread is just surgicone thread and it's kind of um, an orangey color as well so that you don't really see at all. But this is just a really pretty chain. But again, if I were using this um, for weaving or anything else, even though it doesn't look curly or anything else, if I press that with some steam, it will look even better. And it's just a really pretty thing to do. And the other beauty, there are a couple of things that make using the serger chain so good. Number one, you don't have to buy a trim. And number two, if you have something that has colors that are kind of difficult to match, guess what? You've got them right in your thread collection to um, match them perfectly for exactly what you want. And that's what I did on that cross body bag. With, it's kind of a chamois color um, ultra suede, just like that. And I wanted to keep it all kind of in the same color family. I did not want it to be super bold. And um, so I could do that with the two cream or off-white really color threads in the upper looper and that topier color or camel color in the uh, lower looper. So that's, um, that's using the chain stitch. And again, that would be the same thing that I would use for the tassels, if I wanted to couch on chains onto uh, the surface of a quilt or other, even even one of the crossbody bags or, or something else, that would be the stitch I'd go to. Now I can switch over to um, cover chain stitch mode and do some chunky chain stitching right on. Um, a project itself. And with the chunky chain stitching, a lot of times when I have the, some of my samples at in-person events and people are giving it a close-up look and they'll say, how did you attach that chain onto the surface? That's how dimensional it is with eight-weight threads and 12-weight threads. And sometimes I'll even use three 12-weight threads in the looper, which I'm going to do in just a, a few minutes. Um, you're not but it sits up, you're just stitching on the fabric um, with the wrong side face up so that your decorative thread that's in your chain looper shows on the right side of the project on your fabric. So, um, but it's so dimensional, it looks like it was couched on, but you've eliminated that whole step, which is really fantastic. So um, I think I'll just switch my machine over. I'm gonna bring it over to um, cover chain stitch mode. Grab my, grab my chain stitch and cut my threads too. And I'll pull these out. Does anyone have any questions about anything while I'm setting this up? I'm going to set my machine up for stitch number 16, which is, that is a two thread chain stitch. But as I said, I'm going to use three threads. I'm going to use, actually four threads. I'm going to use three 12 weight threads in the chain looper and my needle thread. So there are four threads. So um, I'm going to change my needle position from the overlock mode. I'm going to put it in my center chain needle position. I'm going to re-thread 
that. I'm working around my cameras a little bit, so it takes me a little bit longer to do a scenario on those. And I've got an ELX705 needle, 9014, in my, um, in my center cover chain stitch needle position. So just in case you're wondering about that. Um, and in cover chain stitch, you can use um, the ELX705, 9014, 8012. And I believe you can also use the 705. SUK, which are more for um, knit fabrics uh, that are very stretchy. So let me remove my two eight weights. Look how bright that yellow, that orange is. It's really, really pretty, but blended with that lavender, it's a really nice combo. I never wear orange, though. Orange is one color. Among a few oranges and yellows, never wear them. Never wear yellowy greens. I like the dark greens and um, teals and those, but I can't wear anything in those yellow families. Um, Yvonne said, "Is my thread stand available in the something?" I, Yvonne, let me just see if I can bring that. I'm gonna, I, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Hang on. Is it available? You can purchase the thread stand from my website at gailpatrice.com. And the one I'm using, just to show you that I have the three threads on it, is this is the large. And this will fit on any one of the spool pins because of those, um, concave cutouts on it. I'm putting it on my chain looper stand. And rather than put the three threads through um, the air threading, I think I'll use a thread cradle. And I will bring those through those little bypass brackets. And I'm going to talk about that on the next Surge or Savvy. I was kind of hoping I was going to have a new product to show you today, but um, it's coming from the manufacturer, and I think it's due to be here tomorrow or Thursday. But Thursday, I am leaving for Raleigh, so um, I guess we'll just have to wait on that one. I'm going to cut my... Uh, and let's go to the machine and see if we can see what I'm doing. So I, I'm not going to move them around so that you can see that, but You've seen me do a thread cradle before. And what I'm doing is putting the two cut ends of that thread cradle in my chain looper air threading port. And you just saw it come out right here. I think you can see it. It's right on my finger. I'm going to bring my three 12 weight threads up. I'm going to stand up so that I don't bump the camera. I've got a green, a 12 weight of the same orange thread, and I'm trying to talk a little bit louder because people tell me that when I turn away from the computer, my voice fades. I'm putting those in the chain looper threading route, but let me... I'm going to see if I can tilt this camera a little bit, maybe, so that you can see down here. Hang on, and let me see if that worked. Uh, let me brighten it up. Yeah, good. Okay. 
So I have these bypass brackets, and I am bringing my three 12 weight threads. Let me cut the end so that they're all even with each other. I'm going to bring those down, put those three through the hole that's designated lavender for the cover chain stitch position. Then I'm going to unlock my threading tubes down here. And I am going to use my locking fork, but not for locking. I'm going to use it to grab. I'm going to use it to grab my thread cradle right down here. Pull it, and here's the rest of it in the eye of that looper. I'm going to put my three threads through the loop of the thread cradle, pull those through, and here they are. So the reason I like to use the bypass brackets rather than through the air threading tubes with multiple threads, more than two threads, or um, even if I use two eight-way threads, I use the bypass bracket. I think it creates less drag on the, um, I think it creates less drag on the threads themselves and it keeps the tension consistent. So that's what those bypass brackets are for, just in case you're wondering. And as usual, I leave probably about a four inch tail here. And I want to pull, I've unlocked my threading tube. Oh, I better lock down my upper looper for cover chain stitch mode. I've got my table on and you see it didn't close. I've got to push that lever back up to the overlock mode. You didn't see it because I've got my face camera on. Let me put my, let me put my other camera on. Okay, so here we have, and I just had to move this back to the overlock mode so that it fits into this notch. I've got my cutting width dial, which is under the machine down to five. Let me rearrange this camera so that you can see, I think you can see uh, my screen and I had the exposure way up so it's, I gotta lower that again for the glare. Turn it down, oops, have to bring it up I guess there. Okay, so now I am in cover chain stitch mode, you only see two of the blocks lit up with numbers, the chain needle and the um, chain looper. I'm going to close this door. Now, I'm going to start stitching. Now, typically, I always have a piece of starter fabric to bring that chain looper thread up to the surface of the throat plate. However, I don't have one handy, so I'm just going to start stitching on this um, and hope that it doesn't get too twisted or tangled up. Let me make sure my needle thread isn't hung up on it. Oh, I've got my knife up too. I've got to put that down. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to start stitching. I've got my fabric wrong side up. This is a lightweight. Uh, fusible fleece that's on the back of it. And I have the three threads in, so I'm going to bring my stitch length up from 3.0. I'm going to try it at 3.6 just to see what it looks like. And this is just for fun, so it's not critical. And I'm going to bring my um, presser foot pressure lever down to one. That's on top of my machine over where the presser foot is, but on the top of the machine. That lightens the presser foot pressure. And I can um, maneuver my fabric around a little bit more easily with that. And I think that's good. So let's, I have my, my knee lift is off. So I'm using my presser foot um, lifter on the machine. I'm cutting my needle thread. 
pulling back, that's going to pull that needle thread to the underside and lock that last stitch. Ooh, this is really pretty. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. So, and let's look at this under the close-up camera. I have a couple of other lines of stitching here, but I'll point it out. So here we have it right here. Let me lower the exposure. Oh, I think it's okay. Maybe a little bit lower. I think that's better. So here it is, and that's with three 12 weight threads in the chain looper. Here are my starting threads, my ending threads. They are locked. Let me just pull it over right down here. Just ignore these. I was doing this earlier. Um, they're locked, but you can see how pretty the thread blending is on that. And again, it sits right up on top. You can even see it move with my finger. So um, it's just really super, super pretty. But, um, oh, Kathy, you're saying you love, love, love that foot. Oh, Yvonne, you're saying is my thread stand available in the UK? No, it is not. But um, you can order it from me. And um, the only thing that changes is it's not a flat shipping rate. What I do, because um, I've sent it to Australia, I've sent it to um, different places in Europe. It just depends. What I do is I go to the post office, find out exactly how much the postage is going to be out of the country and that's all that I charge you on that so um, if you want to order it you can definitely do that and I'll be happy to send it to you but uh, as of right now I do not have a distributor in the UK but you never know things can change so um, but as of right now you can order it from me and um, I can send it out to you and I'll be happy to and I don't all I charge is the exact amount of shipping for that to your address so um, that's how that is. I, Judy says it looks like pearls. It really does. It is such a pretty stitch. Um, the, it's so dimensional. It's really beautiful. And with the thread fusion, you see how different colors come to the front. Um, that one has a green, that kind of American cheese orange, and the aqua. And you can see all of those in different areas. But you don't get that um, stripey effect uh, or block effect of colors. They all kind of blend as they twist through the uh, machine. And different colors do come to the forefront. Um, Pam has said, what's my favorite eight-weight source? I'm a big fan of the Wonderful threads simply because they tend to stand up very well to surge your tension and speed. Although most of the time when I am doing anything decorative, I really stitch at a moderate rate with decorative threads only because if I'm trying to follow a particular design or do something like that, um, I slow it down just a little bit. But there are lots of good threads on the market. Wonderful is my favorite. I also like Sulky. Uh, Superior makes great threads. Madeira makes great threads. Somebody had mentioned the Valdani, which is a wool thread. Now, I have not used that on a serger. So I can't speak to how well it will stand up to tension on your serger. But never say never. I always try it. If it works, fantastic. I've got one more thing in my back pocket to use so um but if it tends to break if any of the threads that tend to break easily um then i kind of steer away from them when it comes to embroidery threads i think on my very first youtube live oh when i was doing thread fusion i showed five machine embroidery threads in a top stitch needle for uh flat locking embroidery thread I tend to recommend going for polyester rather than rayon. Rayon is beautiful and it's great, but um, I do think it's a little more fragile and prone to breakage on a serger because of the speed and tension. But if you slow down, I bet you still can use it on it. But polyester is a little bit stronger because it's a synthetic. So, um, 
But Wonderful Madeira, Sulky, Superior, um, if anyone else knows any brands that they particularly like on the decorative threads, put them in the comments because, again, I learned something we all do. So um, I, I have just an hour now. So are there any questions from anyone or any suggestions for upcoming search or savvies or anything else? I love doing these things. It's so much fun to see everybody talking and, and chatting. That's really kind of fun. Um, and if your friends are at work or they can't catch this live, you can always tell them that it's recorded and it will show up on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Gail Yellen. And you see my searcher tip clips there as well. So um, this is great. And again, if you're going to be in the Raleigh area, I'd love to see you this weekend at the Bernina World of Sewing event. And we'll make that really nice tote bag. And I'll have lots of samples to show you in my trunk show as well. But thanks for joining me today. And happy sewing and searching. Take care, everyone.